Human Folly is loud. She is seductive and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house. She takes a seat on the highest places of the town, calling to those who pass by who are going straight on their way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And to him who lacks sense, she says, stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in the secret is pleasant. But he does not know that the dead are there, that our guests are in the depths of Sheol. So let's apply this to ourselves. Let's think about how this is going to affect us. If the temptation to listen to folly is so powerful, then how much more should we be training our ability to discern right from wrong? How much more should we be studying the scriptures? If someone who is walking, who is passing by, who's just passing by, who is going on the straight way, and the temptation is there to go into this house of folly, right? To go to the place of the dead. That temptation is strong. How much more should we be looking to, to develop our are the powers of discernment, right? How much more should we be seeking to know what is right and wrong? How much more should we be seeking the scriptures for that and warning people and helping people and setting, you know, boundaries for people and saying, hey, you're, you're, you're not acting wise. Let me, let me set up some rules for you for wisdom. You know? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're afraid to do that. Oh, we can't add to scripture. We're not adding scripture. This is scripture. And so we need to apply it to ourselves, though. Um, that's not adding to scripture. That's just application. Right? I need to apply it to my here and now, not to just let it go. Be like, well, that's 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 what it says. You know, yeah, it is what it says, but I need to live it out. I need to apply it to my real world situation. So we need to do that. And we realize that the temptation of folly is great, is strong, is powerful. Then we need to be on our best game. We need to step it up. We need to get going. You know, whatever it takes to study scripture to get that into our minds, that's what we need to do. We need to practice those that power of discernment saying, what does this say? Okay, let me go to my word here. Let's see what this says. Okay, that's wrong. This is right. And we need to do that over and over again all the time until our powers of discernment are starting to grow. And then we need to keep doing it to make sure that they stay sharp. We don't want to become dull of hearing. We want to be sharp in hearing and be discerning all the time. Is this right or is this wrong? Let me go back to the scripture. Not to complain and not to think everything is wrong, but to actually compare and contrast what the actual word of God says. Number two, a person who loves the world will grow more and more enamored with the world and will have their minds darkened so much that they would prefer hell over heaven. They would prefer death rather than life. They want chaos over peace. This is the world that we live in. This is how people live. A person who loves the world will grow more enamored with the world. And they, the wisdom cries out and they are like, what? I, I don't want to hear you. I'd rather have hell. I'd rather live in the haunted house than in the beautiful palace. I'd rather have that. That's what happens. Now, the question is, are you like that? Is that what you want? I hope it's not. I hope it is not. I hope you prefer living in the in wisdom's palace and eating and drinking the best food and the best wine and enjoying yourself for all eternity. Or you can go to the place of the dead where the ghosts are there and, and you're going to spend eternity in hell. That's... Don't do that. Follow the Lord. I was reading uh, the commentator, Arnott, said, When you have tasted and seen that the Lord is gracious, the foolish woman beckons you toward her stolen waters and praises their sweets in vain. The new appetite drives out the old. So if you're tempted by sin, the remedy is not just keep trying not to do it, right? If we're tempted to do something evil, if folly is calling us to, um, you know, say folly is tempting us to, to lie all the time. We're always lying. We're always telling lies. Tempting us to do it over and over again. The way to, the way to confront that, the way to change your behavior, the way to actually follow Christ is not to, is not to just try to stop lying. I'm going to try to stop lying today. I'm not going to lie today. No, that's not what you do. It's not just to make vows that you'll never do it again. The remedy is to replace your love of sin and the world with the love for Christ. 
Make him your desire and the old desire replaced. That's what he's saying. You need to taste and see that the Lord is good. Keep tasting and keep seeing that the Lord is good. And once you have that taste for the Lord, once you see that the Lord is gracious and good, then that fool, that folly woman, when she says, hey, come here, I want, I want to give you something. I want to you know, go over there and steal that bread. I'll be, go steal that water. It'll be better. It's better than what wisdom gives you for free. You'd be like, eh, no thanks. This free water is amazing. And that stolen water, I got nothing for it. I don't want that. Why would I want that? I got the best right here. This is the best stuff ever. That's not sweet. That's toilet water. I don't want that. You're lying to me. Get out of here. And that's what you will do. But you have to replace, you like, oh, the love of Christ, the, the, the things of the Lord is so much better. That is what I want. That is what I want. And it begins to push out the old once you go after the new, right? Once you put on the new, the old has no place to be there anymore. And so your thoughts begin to change. That's what we need to do. We need to take off the old, put on the new. And uh, so put on the Lord. Follow wisdom. Love wisdom. Drink deeply uh, at wisdom's, uh, you know, <laughs> wine vats. Drink it up. Because you know, once you get that taste for the wisdom, you won't want anything else. Once you, once you eat the meat from wisdom's house, you won't want anything else. You won't want stolen bread because I can get the, the amazing meat at wisdom's house. I'd rather have that. Thank you very much. And so... It, changes your way of thinking it changes your thoughts so if you are tempted to lie replace it with the truth pour yourself into the truth if you're you know tempted into pornography go after your wife if you have a wife if you don't have a wife get married <laughs> if that's their temptation now you know what you need to do you know make that a priority get that done let's go so yeah but god gives you things Use the things that God gives. Don't go after the the things that Satan gives you, right? Because Satan is the one who's folly. Satan is the one who's telling you these things. Satan is saying, hey, come here. I got something for you. Come over here. Mine's better. Mine is so much better than God's. And that's what he says. Did God really say that? Look at this fruit. This fruit is amazing here. It's going to taste better than anything else you got. All these other trees, man, they're all right. But guess what? This is better. Stolen stolen fruit from a different tree is better. Stealing this fruit that is prohibited from you is better. Exactly what he told you, right? Stealing is better. It's it's sweeter, man. It's it, hey, Guys, it's sweeter fruit over here. That's why God doesn't want you. God doesn't want you to be like him. He's lying to you. And that's what, that's what Satan says. So we know the schemes. We know how it works. So let's not listen. Let's go a different way. Let's choose the straight path. Let's go to Wisdom's house and feast on what she has for us. It's so much better. Better than anything you desire. More than riches. More than gold and silver. It is priceless. So let's go there. And I'll meet you there. Come back next time and we'll look at our next section of Proverbs. We're going to jump all the way to Proverbs 30. That's where we're heading next time. Um, so I'll see you there. Bye. -bye.